Israel says it has mostly secured the Gaza border and is evacuating nearby towns where the bodies of Hamas fighters are being recovered. The death toll in Israel and Gaza is now over more than 1,000 500. Um, so the Israeli Defense Force is expected to mount a ground assault in Gaza this week as the U.S. Navy moves towards the Middle East. Israel has shut off access to electricity, water and fuel, leaving over 2 million Palestinians without basic services. Meanwhile, Palestinians are pleading for intervention as Israel's air assault continues. People on the ground say they've nowhere to go to escape the conflict, having been boxed in and prohibited from crossing into Egypt. All right, for the latest on this developing story, we're joined from Tel Aviv by ENCS Sarah Coates. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Just talk to us about the, the exchange of fire uh, between um, Hamas in Gaza and Israel today. What's been happening? Yeah, look, just over the last 20 or so minutes, there's been a massive barrage of rockets sent over from the Gaza Strip into Israeli territory, really targeting this city known as Ashkelon. It is less than an hour south of where we are now here in Tel Aviv and is home to around 150,000 people. What we can tell you is that a number of people have been injured, a number of buildings have been partially destroyed. We've seen unverified video coming in of big fires breaking out cars destroyed and as I mentioned buildings hit. Now just in the last few minutes the IDF did come out to say that it has struck a number of Hezbollah targets. This is on the northern border. This is on the border with Lebanon after rockets were also fired from the north. Now residents in these very northern communities are being told to stay in shelter uh, with the situation up there really dicey at the moment. Israel is, of course, paying a lot of attention to this northern border, given that Hezbollah, which operates in Lebanon, is supported by Iran. And uh, this terror group is said would not weigh in. It gave uh, its guarantee to Lebanon's foreign minister saying... We won't get involved unless we are, quote, harassed by Israel. But look, it seems like that may be becoming uh, not so true. We've seen just over the last couple of days a number of infiltrations, even though the infiltrations from Lebanon, they were put down to Palestinian and Islamic jihad operatives there. But, you know, especially given this uh, volley of rockets that were just sent over from Lebanon, it is looking a little bit more likely that Hezbollah may be dragged in willingly or un unwillingly into mm. this conflict. And that, of course, would be a very significant development because it would, it would uh, signify a real broadening of this war. I want to ask you a little bit more about the hostage situation. Uh, you told us last night there were uh, probably about 150 hostages, which includes Israeli civilians, it includes the elderly, it includes youngsters and foreigners. Now, Hamas has said that every time Israel launches a strike into Gaza City without forewarning, they will execute one of those hostages. Uh, what is the latest on that? Look, I have some pretty disturbing information. It's really hard to actually talk about. Uh, the IDF has just warned parents of children, school-aged children, to immediately delete TikTok, to immediately delete Instagram from their kids' phones, saying that Hamas is about to release horrendous videos of these hostages begging for their lives. Look. It is just so hard to hear. There are estimated to be around 150 of these people potentially being held underground underneath Gaza in these so-called terror tunnels, also in basements. There are people aged 84 and there are little children. It is absolutely horrendous. Uh, the Red Cross says it has tried to find a way to get in contact, to understand the whereabouts of these people. But 
there's been no avail, it says. At the same time, a number of families have landed here in Israel. There are foreigners, as you mentioned, and there's a lot of pressure being put on both the Benjamin Netanyahu government and the Biden administration to do whatever is possible, whatever they can to secure the safe release of these people. But look, it was only a matter of hours ago that a senior Hamas spokesperson came out to say that there will simply be no prisoner swap, no release of hostages mm -hmm. until this war is over. And look, it's looking far from over. So mm -hmm. that is the latest update with the hostages. And it's certainly just soul destroying. Yeah, it's completely uh, disturbing. Absolutely awful. Has the Israeli government indicated whether it is giving those four warnings um, before it launches attacks, which include civilian areas? Have they said anything specifically about that? Yeah, well, look, they're known as door knocks, and they've been common practice for the last couple of decades, dropping little mortars on top of roofs to sort of alert residents that there is a strike incoming. The IDF now says, look, that simply won't be happening, just given the complexities of this conflict and the absolute atrocities that Hamas has been carrying out in Israeli territory and also in the Gaza Strip, uh, potentially with uh, relation to these hostages. Now, look, of course, there is still a lot of concern for the innocent Palestinian people who are basically pawns of Hamas in the Gaza Strip. As we know, Gaza has now been completely blockaded. No food, no water, no electricity and no gas. But, you know, in saying that, Hamas uses these people widely known as human shields. It puts its weapons in schools and in hospitals. And this is simply the reality of this conflict. Yeah, and, and civilians... Trapped. I mean, we're seeing horrific images, as you say, from what has happened since Saturday in Israel. Uh, those youngsters at that music festival, um, 260 of them slaughtered. Then we're seeing these horrific images coming from Gaza, young children being impacted. It's just an absolute no-win situation. Is the Israeli government in favour of some sort of humanitarian co corridor in Gaza to at least get uh, children out of the eye of this conflict? Well, look, it is just so complicated. There are calls, of course, coming from the international community, from the WHO, from the UN, to open a corridor to let humanitarian aid in. But we did hear some reports a little earlier that Egypt was potentially facilitating some aid coming into the Strip, but that is not being allowed. This, of course, as I mentioned, is due to the complexities. A lot of the time, Gaza uh, operatives, Hamas operatives, can disguise themselves as civilians can disguise themselves, you know, as humanita humanitarian aid workers. So this just really adds the layer, adds to the complexities of this conflict. So look, Israel says right now nothing is allowed in or out of the Strip and that is expected to remain, uh, you know, the same decision for the coming days. All right. Thank you so much uh, for that update. Disturbing as it is, uh, do take care. That, of course, is Ian Sears' correspondent, Sarah Coates, coming to us live uh, from Tel Aviv. Now, stay